right. So welcome everyone. Tonight is uh, Tuesday, March 15th, advisory meeting. And um, so tonight's order of business, we're revisiting with the DPW, uh, talk a little bit about budget, predominantly around the, the energy uh, lines. I mean, we covered the vast majority of the budget. We're going to talk a little bit about uh, fuel and energy. And that's going to really cut across um, the majority of any department that has that. We'll talk a little bit about um, the warrant articles. Okay. Um, so, I guess as a as a precursor, you know, to that, um, you know, Ted, I'll I'll let you kind of open things up uh, to provide an overview of the, the energy analysis, and then. And then that, I think, will be a natural uh, progression into Leslie and DPW, and, and then we can revisit with other departments as okay. we go uh, Last year, we uh, forecast energy, and this will be our second year at it. And the first sheet has got electricity at the top. We'll go through that. And uh, let me just kind of orient you to the, uh, to the table, and then we'll get into the numbers. Um, Obviously, the users are pretty obvious, but the town hall account, 192, has parks in it, so that needs to be noted. And the Houghton electricity is under town building maintenance, and so all these numbers that you see, all the input, came from accounting, but the Houghton was via email, the other is just off of the, you know, the kind of the budget request sheet. Uh, actual 15. FY15 dollars, it's obvious. Uh, the approved uh, FY16 uh, dollars are shown there. And when we want to compare totals, we need to look at uh, totals without Houghton because we don't have numbers on all the Houghton columns. So you can see the actual FY15 was 99,000 uh, approved. We, we ratcheted things down to 80,400 last year. And then this year we said let's uh, hold things constant. So the requested FY17 dollars also add up to 80,400 without hope, of course. And then uh, just to see how how we're doing, uh, we looked at the uh, expense ledger FY16 year to date annualized. Most of these are year to date January. Um, annualized. One of them I, I didn't get till late. It's uh, F February annualized. But the total uh, at the bottom line there, 79902 compares favorably with our approved FY16 dollars. Uh, just taking, let's go with the assumption, and, and my proposal would be that we hold electricity constant knowing that the national grid is going to the PUC or DPU, whatever we call it here, uh, asking for a rate increase. And beside each of the users, actually column two, you can see the rate, G1, G2, etc. And then the rate increase that they're requesting. And of course, they are only responsible for the delivery part of the bill, but the way they make their rate look a little more uh, palatable is they give you the percentage on the total, which is a little, little not, I wouldn't be in favor of doing things that way, but that's what they do. Um, fire and safety is the only G2 account. That means it uh, consumes more than 10,000 kilowatt hours a month. Uh, and likely, you know, it's very possible with the transfer of um, the dispatchers to Devon's if the electricity consumption goes down enough, it'll be a G1. Anyway, that, so on the upside, we have the, the ask for rate increase by national grid on the delivery part, but on the downside, we have some very favorable energy prices. I mean, natural gas is selling for, you know, under two bucks a, uh, a minute CF, a million BTU. So I'd propose that we straight line it across and the final FY17 column is just taking um, the, the annualized dollars and, uh, 
and, and really just rounding them off and we get another, we get 80,100 for the bottom line, which is virtually the same as, as what we're experiencing and what we approved for FY16. So that's, uh, and we won't speak to the last uh, three columns at the moment. So any uh, questions on electricity? <coughs> Senator Advisor, do you guys have any questions or about uh, the uh, FITEL? And are, are you okay with, with those as assumptions? Yeah, yeah. sure. Yeah. I'm kind of surprised by the fire safety energy. I'm sorry, sir? I'm surprised by the uh, <coughs> amount of usage of the fire safety building. Yeah, um, it is 24-7 and... Yeah. and it is what it is, I guess. Do they have electric heat or something? Mm -hmm. I assume they have um, gas. Wasn't it? It's gas. Yeah. No, they have oil heat. Oil heat. Yeah. And uh, we can point out both for heating and electrical purposes, the library and the fire and safety are state of the art design. And when I was part of the energy committee, we did some auditing, and they were after some attention to things running as designed. So you have modern buildings, modern design, and they're running per design at least a year ago or so. Mm -hmm. uh, so yeah, central air conditioning at the fire station. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And, and the situation with all the computer equipment may not be ideal. It's sitting in the area where they work. It generates a lot of heat, and it's a, it's a people-conditioned area rather than having a, a kind of a room where you put all your computer equipment and do things a little differently. I'm not saying it would make a big difference, but it, we've noted that. And it, it's just, a, and there's a lot of square footage there. Mm -hmm. And the bays where the trucks are kept, it, those are kept at 60 degrees. And uh, we raised that as a question. And there's some, uh, I don't know, it's antibiotics or some kind of medicine that's in the ambulance that cannot be allowed to freeze. Mm -hmm. I, I still think with some uh, there are other approaches to heating a whole big bay to keep a golf compartment full of medicine for there's other approaches. But anyway. Well you can't you can't keep you can't keep the fire station at freezing anyway because the, everything runs on diesel. Right. So you have to you, you, you either you either connect uh, engine block heaters to everything, or you yeah. have to keep it up. And, and I don't want to get into the design level, but you know, you, 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 sixty is one thing, but you could save a lot of you know, your heat transfer through the walls would be less if you kept it at forty. And and you could argue that's too cold. And that's mm -hmm. it. anyway. That's the temperature really doesn't matter. You're still burning twenty five thousand. Yeah. You're burning a pile of 25,000 kilowatt hours a month. Is that right? Yeah. Yeah. So, it's ten, times, 10 times a standard house, maybe even more. Yeah. Okay. Um, let's go to page two. And uh, the approach here is to uh, understand the quantity of, you, of uh, <coughs> energy we've used uh, and then multiply by the appropriate uh, cost per gallon or per whatever. And heating oil um, goes to the town hall out in DPW and fire and safety. And we looked at the uh, FY13, 14, 15 use in gallons and took the the highest year, and this really builds in a lot of safety factors. So we're providing for gallons for the coldest winter, and if there are any other errors in here, it would wash those out as well. And you may ask, well, how? So Ted, just to be clear, when you say the, the highest year, you, you look back through 13, 14, 15, Figured out the most usage, the, the coldest, uh, the, the, the highest, in terms gallons, of the city, absolute year. most conservative. Right. Okay. And you'd say, well, <coughs> just how tight are the gallons for 13, 14, or 15? And uh, it varies by building, but uh, from low to high on the town hall is a 12%. Uh, 
and on the uh, DPW it's 47 percent and part of that is because sometimes they burn waste oil and don't use as much uh, purchased oil mm -hmm. uh, but the others are also uh, like 15 to 30 percent so you're looking at a, a high gallons per year okay um, EIA is energy information agency that is the uh, a Department of Energy uh, branch that does forecasting and we actually took monthly uh, estimated costs of fuel oil in the in the winter months of FY17 and averaged those to two dollars and nine cents a gallon and the next columns over you just simply multiply them out and you get the, the uh, total dollars uh, the budget request numbers are the next column and then uh, look using the uh, EIA price times the highest uh, FY year uh, gallons uh, using that product um, suggested a, a budget number you know 5600 for the uh, Town Hall, 2800 for Houghton, 2700 adds up to $24,600 for heating oil. And then just so we can see how much we reduced the requested amount, the last column is the delta of the request minus the final. And those are those numbers there. I, I think it's a, a fair approach. I think there's enough factor safety built in there. And if somehow we have Mm -hmm. We run out of money. Advisory can, could cover, you know, five, yeah. five or ten percent of it. But I, I don't see any. The two areas where they're shaded. Um, well, I haven't take, gotten down there. Yeah. Uh, propane. I won't go through all the detail because it's really the, the same thing. When we met with the uh, library, we used an average gallons of propane, seventy-one hundred gallons over the last three fiscal years. But I thought that if I'm going to read the other buildings using the maximum. I, I should do the same for the library. So that's where the 7719 comes from. The 205 again from you know, uh, informa Energy Information Agency. And that would suggest that a uh, $15,824 would cover it. So we just rounded that to $15,800 and uh, before we had given, we had agreed to the library on 15,500, so it's a little bit of a bump up mm -hmm. uh, for that. So the total heating, if you do oil and propane for the town is $40,400. Um, gasoline and diesel, of course, this is for motive equipment. And uh, similarly, the gallons come from accounting uh, all the way down. I'll just go gasoline and diesel together. The gallons are from accounting. They are not the highest of fiscal years. It's FY15 gallons. The prices, the 189 and the 219, are from EIA. Um, the next column over would be the product of those. And then the budget request numbers, you can see those. And then uh, I would propose that the FY17 budget be um, I don't know whether I use. I pretty much just rounded the uh, the ones that were derived from the EIA number, and where we don't have gallons, we just took the requested amount and it became the budget amount. Um, and we did increase uh, snow and sand because there were 6,450 gallons of diesel, and that suggests you need. $14,141 using the price per gallon of diesel. And the budget request was 9000 so we upped that to $14,000. Um, the diesel gallons seem high, but that's a s subject for another day. <laughs> is that based on what it said to Ninochka? I suspect. Because the tank is about 1000 gallons and usually we fill it up and what I did I took a price of I used two dollars as the average because we don't 
keep track of every. I, I so just took the gallons from Ninoch, okay, okay. from County. All right, um, but I mean, if uh, well, that's what fuels all our, you know, during the plowing season. Mm -hmm. and, and if you could tell, like I think I did it by month. It obviously is higher in certain months, and mm -hmm. we don't you we don't fill it for like three to four months sometimes. So. Well, accounting presented the uh, the total gallons. I didn't. I didn't okay, because I, I didn't that match works. gas. I, mean, I wasn't really sure. You know. But if you need to see that, there is the monthly okay. breakdown. And if we look at the the total energy spend, electricity, heating oil, gasoline, diesel, uh, we're looking at one hundred and seventy-eight thousand, uh, well, one hundred and seventy-nine thousand dollars. The other thing that I'll draw your attention to is the last two columns. I took the the way you determine um, total energy, you measure total things, is put in, in terms of millions of BTUs. And M is Roman numeral M30, so MM is million. And uh, converting oil and <coughs> propane and gasoline is also millions of BTUs. And then looking at the percent of each uh, user, you can see it's a whole bunch of little percents. And in the near future, we will be asked by our green communities friends to, to sign up some uh, consultants because we have to save 20% energy to be a green community. And when you have a lot of little users each only using you know two to fifteen percent of the total, it is extremely challenging to save a total of twenty percent. Um, very challenging, and you have to be careful that the money you spend on consultants and studying, you, your objective is to get the, a return on that investment, and if you're not careful, you'll, you'll never get the return. <laughs> so, well, as long as you're okay with a break even, four years. Yeah, right? forty years. Yeah. Anyway. That was sarcasm. <laughs> I've been accused. It's hard to tell with you. <laughs> well, every once in a while, someone misreads. Yeah. And and if we uh, look at all the um, requested dollars minus the proposed budget, you know, the FY17 budget, we've reduced the request by twenty-three thousand three hundred five. That's what that is down there. So advisory folks, I know um, you know we have this uh, sent out to you guys, but it, it is always tough to take a look at it on a phone. A lot of numbers, but um, and if you want to look it over next week and then yeah. give me a call or um, whatever, that's fine too. You know, just out of the gates, uh, any any questions? I just think. Ted has done an incredible mm -hmm. job of researching all of this and putting everything together. It's, it's just our own budget numbers. And right. it's, it's all there. Yeah. But you sorted <coughs> them and went through them and added the uh, energy administration estimates and so on. So it, that's pretty Yeah, and I compared the uh, Energy Information Agency numbers for January 2016 to our actual 2016 January, and they're they're higher. In other words, they, they tend to run a little higher. So well, I, they didn't project. They, they, nobody could have projected the, the drop in, in energy prices. So I'm uncomfortable uh, using the numbers, and, and they have 30 pages of methodology if you want to read how they do it. Thank you. <laughs> yeah, I have a question. When you uh, came through with the uh, DPW garage for fuel oil, <coughs> heating oil, excuse me. Uh, did you compare the degree days, compare the last year's degree days, and did you compare also how much less um, uh, waste oil we're bringing in than we have ever brought in before? Did those add into your calculations at all? Uh, not precisely, as you uh, mentioned, but good question. Uh, for FY 13, 14, and 15, your heating oil was 
1,300 going gallons one of those years, uh, 1,155 another year, and 885 another year. So I took the, the highest one. Uh, I am receiving less waste oil than I ever have, but we're going completely out. Mm -hmm. So that is going to uh, tip this equation. And every year I get less and less waste oil. How much waste oil did you get in the last couple of years? Okay, how, how much would you need to add to What was your total oil usage, I guess? I would say this year we're probably going to be, we've just filled, right, Leslie? We've yes. just filled, and we filled pretty near, pretty near a thousand gallons, right? Yes. We had two, two seventy-fives. We just brought a thousand gallons in. I never brought a thousand gallons before, I don't believe. And every year it's less and less, and I have to use heating oil sooner and sooner. We've got you a number that covers you for the highest number of degree days, or the coldest degree days. So yeah, but you don't have depending on how much waste oil is coming in that right. year. Yeah, you know, there may mm -hmm. be another 500 gallons of waste oil that yeah. doesn't reflect here. Yeah. What's the highest percent waste oil that's been of what you've used in the last three years? Three years, the highest is probably close to, I'd say, 80%. 80% Yeah, but wow. it's falling now. It's a, a it's a direct drop. It's a direct drop down. Mm -hmm. More and more people are using I don't know what speed speed, drive, speed oil changes are there. Uh, using uh, they have to use as I do uh, the uh, dealerships because of the cars are under warranties. So how far down are you running at like a forty percent rate now instead of? I would say well somewhere around. We just swapped over now. And that's only because the re-days have been in our favor. So I would have normally, I, at this point, I would have said I would have ran out about the end of January. I would have been out of heating oil, out of waste oil. So that's well, made it through February, and somewhere in February we ordered. That's about 50 percent. Yeah, 50 percent, yeah. But from 80 to... 50 would be 30 percentage points less. We're talking pretty small numbers here, but when you add a couple hundred to text calculation. Yeah, we can. Uh, mm -hmm. You know what? Uh, the Shin it up a little bit if you want. Mm -hmm. The waste oil is no cost, it's free? Yes. Mm -hmm. Well, nothing's free. I said, who wants to know? It requires uh, more maintenance on the units than uh, fuel oil does. But other than that, it's, delivered, it's dropped into us by homeowners or whoever changes their vehicles, oil. But on uh, $2,700, if, if we're 10% over, it's, you know, three, three <coughs> or so. Yeah, you know, I mean, the... We can, we can. Well, this is it, you know, um, you know, we uh, wanted to have this ready for when you guys were coming in, right? Because it, I mean, your department hits three different areas of this. Um, but at the same time, um, you know, what, what I think is really good of what Ted has done is, is using the same rationale across the board. Right. Um, so y you make a very compelling point regarding the, the waste oil. My concern is you're here, right? And we have the opportunity to talk to you <laughs> to make some adjustments, right? So maybe someone from the ambulance department is sitting at home watching tonight. I'd be shocked. It's in the <laughs> right? They don't have the benefit of trying to help us, you know, adjust the numbers. It's, I'm fairly confident that these numbers is what they're going to get. Um, so that I, I, I'm a big fan of really maintaining consistency and treating everyone the same so that everyone can be pissed off at me as opposed to just a few here or there. Um, and what I will say is that I, I am fairly confident, I, I know you guys are looking to find and do everything you can to, to get through a given month in terms of your finances. And, and when at the end of the year, whether it's because you're short on, you know, 
um, receiving money from the transfer station because materials are down, or if you know we you know messed up big time here. If you're short, which I heard the first time when you guys were in that we can expect a transfer request from you folks before the end of the year. Uh, that that is why we're here, and you know even on that number, you know if we're off it. Just on waste oil, it's going to translate into an additional five hundred dollars or so. Mm -hmm. I would I be inclined to agree. Okay. I think since he's sitting right there, and we know it's going to happen because he just told us how little oil he's getting. Waste oil. Waste oil. Why make him wait? Why spend down his budget? When he knows he's going to need it, we know he's going to need it, and he's sitting right here. I think it's so you, so you might have requests from one, two, three, four, five different departments. Not that you will, mm -hmm. and not right. So let's make it four, and we we know what our budget's close to real. Yeah, the Harold's condition, the DPW bond is very special because of the waste oil issue. All these other ones are well known and repeating. Yeah. Do we know how much waste oil we get in total? Uh, I assume that we'll have half as much. It depends on the year. This year, here, I believe, what we brought in was right around a thousand gallons. Thousand gallons of waste oil. Well, a little over a thousand. No, I have a little over a thousand. Probably fifteen hundred waste oil. But ETUs do not factor out the same as heating oil. I know. I got to research that. Mm -hmm. Mark, you had a question. Uh, I was going to make the same point as Craig that you know, this is. I think the DPW barn is, a, is the only special case really in town mm -hmm. that they have this alternate opportunity. Opportunity yeah. that I mean, the library isn't going to come in and say, well. You know, we have some other. Mm -hmm. We have books to burn. Yeah, yeah, we yeah, we, put, we burn the spare books, and, and we don't have very many left. So it would yeah, exactly. Nice yeah. So, so I, I think I, mean, I think if, if they know that there's you know mm -hmm. a thousand, mm -hmm. even if you say that co correlates to you know eight hundred gallons of heating oil or something, you know I think you know it's a known issue. So why you know why you're really shortchanging? Well, right, lower, yeah. Harold, if you have fifteen hundred, and how about if I? Assume you have 500 fewer next year, or FY17. Is that enough? My crystal ball is not too good. <laughs> <laughs> I can't but it's it's better. We got two crystal balls. Yeah. So you're, you're saying the heating, the yeah, you, waste oil. If you have that much less, less waste oil, I'll find out the BTUs per gallon, and then we'll add it in as far as You purpose. can, but how are you going to uh, correlate your degree days? And remember, this is a garage. Right. The door is open. And then luckily they don't shut right away. The trucks are half in, half out. Well, he's already using my base here is already the, the highest degree that he's we've had. The After highest the degree. The, 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 the worst, the, the worst case. The mm -hmm. most heating degree. Is. Highest in <coughs> Heating degree is 65 degrees minus the mean of the of the day times. Mm -hmm. this. So, for, so I, I'm I'm open either way. Again, I, like I said before, I I'm a fan of consistency on on this front, namely because it's easy to explain to other departments if they question, you know, why we're treating one particular group. But but you guys are absolutely right. Admit, there is only one one building that has the opportunity for waste oil. So. Uh, in terms of simplicity, you know, Ted, maybe we remain the FY requested of 3,100. It, it, it remains the same for that. I can do that. That's, that's a quick. Uh, I mean, that's. I remain, and we're all we're all on the same page. All right. So that's what we'll do for for DPW. We'll maintain at 3,185. The requested amount. Oh, I'm just trying to. Look, we're negative we're right now. Yeah, we're, negative. we're negative in our account right now. Oh. And he, as of um, the 9th of March, just the latest voucher. 
But you've, got, you've got almost a thousand gallons sitting in your tank. Well, it because it was empty. What's the total of this? Just well, but, will it be empty by the end of the fiscal year? I would hope not. No, I don't yeah. think so. I, don't I think, think that's so. where Mr. Lindsay was going with that. Right, but, but where we're so we'll we'll year ago. Start next winter with a half full tank, maybe. I would say. Okay, that's. Yeah. But we're, we're neg I'm just letting you know we're yeah, negative right. thirteen hundred dollars right now. So, and it was a mild winter. If it just had been like last winter, it would have been negative a lot. You must have had a reason for the thirty-one eighty-five over the west, right? Yeah. Level five. Level five. Okay. You know, I, I think it's okay. You're thirteen hundred in the hole from that. Mm -hmm. Okay. And it was a mild winter. It was right. a very mild yeah, winter. No, I think, yeah, I mean, I think you guys, um, it was my winter, and I mean, you had to submit this budget in the end of November, um, and we can only go based upon, you know, the actual numbers, and, and to Ted's point, we're using the absolute cold, however you want to say it, coldest day, highest usage, however it is, um, but even then, we're, we've thrown that out, and we're just saying, you came in with a request of 3185 um, and I, I think we keep you there. And if I would have asked for more if we weren't level funded. <laughs> <laughs> that, that's the whole point. Of it. it's, a, it's an interesting concept. What a level of fun! The police did a wonderful job, right? I came in with a level funded plus fifteen. Like, but what? What is level funded to you then? You know, like. <laughs> that was an interesting comment. <laughs> but we already, we already know they're over twelve hundred out of this thirty one hundred. So regardless of your your request to have a little funded, they're gonna be back in June or I guess maybe not June. But, December. You know, later on <coughs> saying we were no, what, what, what's you know, what's gonna yeah, happen what they're gonna do yeah. is they're gonna they're gonna look up that we're running low oil, but oh uh, I don't know, it's not going to come from maintenance, but they'll look, oh, they want this other uh, line item. We haven't really spent that much, so let's grab some of that and we'll get um, And that. then it's going to be a domino. Remember the thousand that they just filled up, so that'll last for Sure. Mm -hmm. I think you just leave it where it is, and when they come back, they come back. You know, here we go. Yeah. Yeah. All right. So. Uh, I'm sorry, Ted? Articles? Yes. Um, so now the articles. If, um... Excuse me, Brad, did you want to go over our salt and sand uh, our request first? Yeah, the money we requested from you? Sure. We could, um, yeah, I'm happy to talk about salt and sand. Okay. All right. You gave us all, we had 180000 to start. Yeah. Yes, right. sir. Yep. Good. By the time we bought our sand and our salt, we were $112,440.18. All right? Now, um... So if we gave you 180, you spent 112 on salt and sand. 112, 440 and 18 cents. All right? We went over on salt and sand, but... We went over grossly. But in that one... We'll get there. Okay. I, I, I need to make sure that I'm on board right from the beginning. So okay. I gave you 180, you went out immediately and spent 112 on it. On we got 112,000. Okay. We and when did you do that? We brought in, uh, the beginning of the year, we brought in our normal amount of sand. You allocated 22,000, we spent $39,251.52. That, that was in October. Yes. Okay. All right. Uh, we and that this, was it for sand. That was it for sand. That was our one. No salt. So you uh, the total uh, is you uh, appropriated forty-one. We had forty-one thousand. We brought. We uh, paid out seventy-three thousand one hundred eighty-eight dollars and sixty-six cents. We didn't buy any equipment because uh, we were already running way behind. Even though I needed a new plow, uh, our diesel. We spent $5,809.77. We have $3,190.23 left, uh, even though this was a mild winter. 
our, our gasoline uh, shows we have a 3,000 balance that is incorrect. Right. We're we, doing a we have to do a transfer. Classification. I have a list for Ninochka. And how much is it, about three? Well, $3,071.29. So we went over $71.29 over what we allocated. Um, snow and sand for supplies. Uh, we, we put 10000 We spent $9,764.38 on that money. And a lot, most of this is all repairs for your equipment. Uh, snow removal, your, our vendors, uh, you allocated 30000 we spent $25,190.70. The repairs, repairs, you put $20,000, we are a deficit of $1,947.26 on repairs. Our uh, overtime, you allocated twenty-seven thousand. We spent twenty-three thousand three hundred and seventy-nine dollars and sixty-two cents. Uh, wages. You allocated eleven thousand. We have spent four thousand nine hundred and fifty-three dollars and thirty-three cents. We have a deficit right now, and I have to uh, spend for a T7, which has been a uh, really a thorn in our sides all winter. Truck What's seven. Okay, I still have to put a differential on that truck, but our deficit will be to this point nineteen thousand four hundred and fifty-eight dollars, more than the one eighty you gave us. So I'm still asking for at this time being March. I'm still asking for the fifty thousand. Now we have a truck three, which I would like to tuck under this under this uh, article and under this uh, advance because when it's raining outdoors water pours into the cab from the uh, roof and shorts out our electric system. This year has been our worst year for trucks we've had. Uh, we've owned, we have six that we can put on the road and I can't think of one storm that I could put all six out there. Our average fleet is 16 years old and it's really shown its wear. Remember you have bought, except for two trucks, you bought all used. So you bought what other people wanted to get rid of. And uh, it's showing. This entire, you've been saying you, you, you. <laughs> you, you you're the one sitting up there. Not you, no, you're the one who came in making suggestions. On no, I'm the one that had to take what I took because you weren't going to give me anything else and you wouldn't have had anything else. Mr. Chairman? Yes, sir. We always knew this budget was going to was likely to be way over. This is the 180,000 that we always know is way low, and we purposely don't raise it. So what Harold is talking about is an authorization to go over that budget, and we do that every year. In fact, this is the the littlest amount in many years because it was such a light snow. No, absolutely. You're absolutely right. I, I saw the request about a week ago, and my first response was. Holy cow, yeah. right? And, and I know, you know, I But this spoke, is really a holy young cow. Uh, well, yeah, no, it, it, it's just in the sense <laughs> that. Well, it's, a, it's a holy cow, is this all? <laughs> well, it, no, holy but from my, so from my perspective, it was we had such a light winter, and we already went through yeah. 180, right? And, and I know, I've spoken with Harold before, I, I know he tries to find a good opportunity to buy, when to buy salt yeah. sand, and we'll buy as much as he can, right? So him going out and buying, you know, spending 112 out of the gates doesn't surprise me. But I would have spent I, a lot more if you buy the same amount of sand every year. We have the same amount in reserve every year, just in case we've, we've gone into our reserves. That much has to be bought every year. The problem is this budget comes from when sand was, I think, $8 or seven fifty a yard, and now we're somewhere around 13 a yard. So every time it's going up, salt probably then was, what are we paying, 50, 60? We're probably then paying 25 or 30. Yeah. So it eats at it before we even started. I mean, that's before we start here. I spent 112,000. I haven't even seen a snowflake. And winter's still not and, over. And, and then, well, I know, this, <laughs> and, you know, that's what was surprising to me. <laughs> right? Right. That it was, exactly. you know, I saw the request last week and you know, the, the, and it was we're already through the 180. I was like, <laughs> and you have to go out and buy snowplow blades. Yeah. You have to buy a lot of equipment to get ready, a lot of stuff to get ready for the winter. 
Plus, you have to do a lot of repair work to make sure those trucks can go out the door. I don't think anyone's critical of the fact that you're over the 180. Right. No. No, no. I, I, the 180 uh, is sort of a political number that we, we do, so. But is this an official request for an increase to this year? I mean, this year only I know the, why the 180 can't move. But what I'm tired of is hearing every year the same thing, that you feel like you're about run your department completely wrong, you've done everything wrong. I'm getting really sick. No, but I mean, I'm getting sick. No, I'm getting sick. 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 I'm We've never fully funded snow and sand, and so that's not. But what I'm, what I'm trying to understand is, are you actually asking for a number now? I'm asking for 150,000 so I can uh, fix the equipment that needs to be fixed okay, so that's in what, case we have to go out the door saying. and to cover our deficit. Okay, and that's a that's a transfer request for now. That's right. No, no, no. It's a permission to overspend. But that's right. It's a permission to overspend by 50000 Right. And, and the, the advisory and selectmen both have to approve it. And then Harold can run a deficit of up to 50000 And then at the end of the session, the town accountant will so have find, find money to fund it. This year full more and this will, be a, yeah. this will be a wonderful year for her because instead of trying to find $280,000 like she usually has to, she'll have to find probably less than 50,000. Yeah, so this is, uh, sorry, so it's a re pre request to overspend. So that's that's why I don't have a specific right. transfer request in front of me from you guys, right? So right. they have all right. <coughs> Under that permission to request, can we repair? Whatever you can use that money for, you should be able to use that money for. So if, if 50 is the number you want, I don't see why you couldn't repair with that. I don't say I'm going to use all 50. I've just got to get some stuff already. Because next year, come uh, June or July, so we'll be dipping right back into it for the repair on these these trucks that you need to plow, uh, plow and sand your roads. It might be well to double check with Don what you can and can't spend will. it on. Because yeah, well, there may be the logistics that none of us understand. Yeah, but it's it it's supposed to be towards events related to the the snow and ice removal. So. Obviously, if there's a, a vehicle, a truck that you guys use for that and it's not working, then... If, if the next time we have a wet snow and this truck that leaks so much, I, I yeah. would think repairing it to be ready for the next wet snow is a good idea, but... And Harold, it's fair to say, I mean, one of the warrant articles that we're going to talk about, you know, your the DBW is requesting... Uh, a warrant article to for a new saw, uh, sander body, and so that is something entirely different than what you're saying. Oh, yeah. immediate. Right. Yes. Yeah. Um, well, is it a motion in order to approve the fifty thousand deficit? Yeah. Uh, overspending by fifty thousand. You making a motion? Uh, well, I'm asking if. Yeah. No. If yeah. That's. Uh, so I think yes, it's if if so, yes, I'll make that motion. Right. I'll second it. All right. Um, all those in favor of uh, approving the fifty thousand overspend for snow and sand, say aye. 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 Those opposed. Okay. All right. Now, where do we stand on the next one? Article. Article. Yeah. I have a revised. This is first two. All right. No, I'm going to make that. This is right. 4,093,562 of the first two articles. No, 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 as oh, opposed to the, the order that you oh, have, whatever. If that's all right. We have an article that's what was first. Berlin Road is first. Berlin Road Culver. Okay. Eight, four. Berlin Road Culver was put in with steel pipes, and it was put in late fifties, early sixties. The best, and I believe, was put in by G. Bonds only and such when they dug the water hole. Well, those are steel pipes, and if I can find. The pictures. 
I have one picture. There's supposed to be three pipes. I can only find uh, two, and they are, I'd say, five eighths of them are, are gone. They have completely deteriorated, and we have seen them over at Berlin Road on the east side of it um, uh, collapsing. Those pipes are well beyond their life expectancy and uh, we're put in to uh, redo that culvert and put a box culvert in. Carol, is there anything new on this one since originally being submitted? Any? On this particular one? No. Anything no. new? No. Because this was rated first by Capital Planning. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and yeah. So it should be. It doesn't seem to me that we no. need to waste any time discussing it. No, no, the one that should be first is uh, Wilder. That should be number one. Well, but that's not mm -hmm. yeah, no, so. Well, I took so Brad up to see number uh, Wilder. I saw it. I, well, we went to both of them. Mm. Um, so, yeah, I, can I agree with you? you? You know, we. So, guys, just so you know, we were going through the articles, and we we knew we were you folks were headed back in. We had already heard a lot of the rationale, and from a culvert perspective, I mean, Harold, you know, took me up to see these two. Um, so, yeah, I w just wanted to give you folks the opportunity to add any uh, any other commentary. I will say that um, on the Berlin Road one, what Harold was explaining to me, which um, I don't think was conveyed to everyone, was in order to, to get to an area, it has to be dammed off because the water is right there. So that is going to be put off to the side, right? And then to create an actual work area. So that's... Um, <coughs> not the typical culvert it's going to add to the cost of keeping the water at bay. So it's like a coffer dam? Yeah. Yeah. Two yeah. Port I think they're two portable dams. Oh, okay. And you're going to pump from one side of the road mm -hmm. to the other, and that's okay. going to be 24 hours a day. Mm -hmm. right. Then you're going to have to pump your work area out. Right. Mm -hmm. All right. And then they're going to put the box culvert in. Mm -hmm. uh, we've done test boring. We found the soil be better than I expected. I expected peat. It wasn't only in one small area. So uh, I think we've got a good base to uh, put our uh, box culvert in. The, uh, the difficulty of it is dealing with water. The water is always a difficult. And we've got another problem is the water doesn't move that much because there's a large beaver dam that I understand either under 495 or up in the woods. It's supposed to be a very large one. So everything stays more or less where it is. So we've got a pump. So it's going to be, it's not going to be easy. I mean, the, the dam itself will run over, will run over 12,000. We figure 24, uh, down to 12 to put the dam in. They're portable dams. But we're not telling them how to dam this. That's going to be the contractors. They can either do that or if they've got sheets on hand, they can drive sheets to make their portable, mm -hmm. portable dam. Is uh, repair the best word for the title or is it replace? Or reconstruct or something? Oh, that's a repair. Mm -hmm. I mean, if you were a company with profits and mm -hmm. you had to mm -hmm. repair and replace that for the tax and depreciation. But anyway, okay. Mm -hmm. Mr. Chairman? Yes. Uh, the estimates of cost, how do they come about? Uh, I had a, an estimate to do it for me. I estimated them, I had an estimate to do it for me. Mm -hmm. And there again, uh, when you're dealing with this, you've got to add in contingencies that if you were a contractor, you would bid it, and they would bid maybe less. But if they hit the contingency part of it, you know, they escalate. So we've got to figure that in ahead of time. Where basically, we've got to figure the worst case scenario we can figure. Mr. Chairman, I know we're not doing the financing aspects of these, but one advantage of borrowing rather than paying for it right away is that the borrowing you just put into the tax rate what you actually spend. And if you put these estimates into the tax rate and they turn out to be high, you've raised more taxes than you really need to do. Uh, and so that might be a reason to, to borrow on these rather than to. Yeah, I mean, I think um, there's no doubt if the town wants to take care of all of this. Uh, there's going to be some borrowing involved this year. Um, 
And, and I don't think that's a bad thing for the reason I just said. Yeah. I'd, I'd rather pay for what we actually eat rather than mm -hmm. pay off the menu and then find out we can only eat half of what's been served. Mr. Uh, Mr. Berman, mm -hmm. um, on one of the roads, <coughs> on oh, one of the one of the road, oh, it was a little while now. Well, yeah, yeah, kind of treating them similar. Yeah. Um, <coughs> If it had been intended to 10 years ago, could we have lined it instead of replacing it? We're kind of in a head wall mode. I thought uh, to be, uh, for a while when I saw the settlement, I, until I was able to climb down in there, I actually thought I had a collapse. I had a head wall moving. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And the head wall's collapsing, especially mm -hmm. on my east side of the road more than the west. But mm -hmm. the west is too, because when you go down a mile on the road, if you come back towards uh, we used to know it in Wilder Mansion, mm -hmm. You feel your car dip. Mm -hmm. The head wall is moving. On the other side, it's not as pronounced, but it's there. Mm -hmm. So the head walls themselves are moving. Okay. Well, exactly what the culvert looks. I see the water flows pretty good. So I'm beginning to think the culvert itself is not, but my head walls are moving. So if my head, and it's a lot. It's a big head wall. This isn't one I can reinforce. Mm -hmm. I'd, I'd say. It's a, 15 to 18 feet foot head wall. So it it's just made out of field stuff. It doesn't even look like it, there's any aggregate. No, they, were, they, they were dry laid in their day. They were dry laid. And they probably last us 120 years or so. I guarantee what we put in won't do that. <laughs> but uh, but uh, you figure it, it, it's really amazing. It really amazes me. It really does. Um, I thought of a few other ways to do it, but I don't think I can reinforce that at this time. Mm -hmm. And we're at this point, and it is a stone culvert, so we might as well make the end move and I was just looking put a precast in. And the figures on that are less because we don't have to deal with water. Plus, we have just finished one. Mm -hmm. It was almost identical. Samson was. Mm -hmm. So well, Samson, if you remember, I put in for 200 and some thousand, and I think we may have spent 160, so I added another 26 in case I didn't know, find something I didn't know about. Mm -hmm. And uh, that's where the figure came. I did that in conjunction with the uh, estimator. Right. Any questions on um, the <coughs> Long Hill Road culvert? Okay, Long well, Hill's a different story before we go there. Long Hill is a culvert I put in. Ken's going to correct me. I put that in 22 years ago, Long Hill. I think so. 22 years ago, I think I put it in. Since we're talking about how close you're 117. That's right. That's the one. That was a steel pipe, a steel corrugated pipe. And that was, I figured that the last 30 years, and I wouldn't have to do it again. But it's fooled me. It's rotting away. So what that is, is a slip line. It's uh the culvert's there, it's still got its integrity and everything, and only certain parts are starting to deteriorate. So I thought, well, at this point here, if we slip lined it, uh, we would be able to then walk away for with 50 years mm -hmm. if we slipped it. Um, and I think if you look at my long term, not to shoot myself in the foot, but if you look at my long term capital expenditures, if it wasn't done this year, I put it for next year. Mm -hmm. Could it be done the year after that? Probably. But it needs to be done to save you money. But, Craig, were you going down the road of had Wilder been addressed Correct. 10 yeah. years ago? Yeah. It, could yeah. have been, yeah. it could have been slipped and it uh, was, was just a guess. If we could have slipped it and then uh, rip wrapped it, put a long yeah. rip wrap back on to back that wall up and let that pipe that slip on top, yeah, you're right. We okay. could have. Yeah, we could have saved it. Okay. You're just looking for future places like that. Well, uh, we have a list of those, but, but which was done and very yeah. successfully, okay. and with minimal uh, environmental impact too. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, this is easily the fourth year that you've had some culverts on the warren, and you know, you've you've positioned them. You know, you've you've put them forth for a number of reasons. You've pulled them back uh, because something else came mm -hmm. onto your radar. So it's. Uh, in, in my opinion, I think we've done 17, my 24 years here, we've done 17 culverts. Yeah. Not that I like doing culverts. All right. Um, 
Next one is the Article 13, Public Safety. If you could share with the, the committee um, a little bit. Uh, again, we heard from Capital Planning, Harold, and, and you, had to, you took me to Public Safety as well. Um, but again, I just thought for the benefit, you know, since you folks were here, if it would help the committee to hear your perspective. Uh, uh, is there a reason we're town hall? Oh, I, uh, uh, well, simply because I skipped over it. Okay. Yeah, so, sorry. Town, town Hall. hall. Uh, town Hall, town hall like, I was going to say it's self-explanatory. <laughs> you can take a flashlight and go outside and look. Yeah. Uh, the column, the furthest, as you're standing in front of the middle, the furthest to the left, you see all the deterioration at the bottom. I have repaired those columns once before, and for many reasons we can't get the same wood we used to and so on. Now that, all right, let me, I'll, I'll jump around, don't you? I'll jump around. When, when that overhang was put on there, they were put on granite slabs that were on grade. You mean there's no foundation? We're not going down below the frost level. There's your first problem. But they were put on, that overhang was put on in 1916. And two people, families in town, and I can't remember their names, donated the money for it. So it's lasted us 100 years. So saying that, uh, the what's happening is when in the, in the frost goes deep, the granite moves and it lifts up on the overhang. The overhang originally was a, um, a uh, parapet, and somewhere in the past uh, 10 years I could have slammed a roof on it because the parapet was rotted inside. But as the movement goes up and down and up and down, the top of the uh, overhang is pulling away from the building. Being that I know it was put on in 1916 means it was probably put on when they put a timber there and they lagged it in. They put in um, lead shields and they lagged it and then they hung off of that off of the two plots they they lagged they hung the uh, parapet i believe originally the trim you see on the building was a trim it wasn't something that was supposed to be structural somewhere in the in the past in the near not too long ago that became structural because that actually started moving away from the wall and you see some brackets we put in and we pushed it back in with the loader so that is carrying load the overhang is moving and moving out it's coming down the uh, columns and, uh, being well on grade are sinking um, so that's the story of it does it need fixing yeah, it needs to be fixed. It needs a new one. Not we looked in before I looked into, and I had two structural. In, I had one structural engineer. No, I actually had two, and we looked into pulling it back with cables. The problem is the way it's constructed is constructed with boards uh, to the whole front, that which you would have to pull against to make it come back in. So there's nothing structurally that I can pull against mm -hmm. to make it come back to uh, put turnbuckles and cables to pull back. The only way, and, I, and we weighed out the idea of repairing, by the time we got through with the cost of repairing, we might as well just build a new front, build a new one. But the new one must look exactly as we have now, because this has a historic preservation. Mm -hmm. act but that you you said, if I heard you correctly, it was added on in 1916. It was so not original. Leslie found something on a postcard of 1906. Mm -hmm. And there was actually, uh, I always thought there wasn't, but there was some type of an overhang. Mm -hmm. Not this one, but another one. Mm -hmm. There's a postcard that she picked up that uh, she found online, right? Yeah, my husband found I it. Found it. it was You're yeah. killing it. I was, gonna, I was actually going with the historical route and let it come off since it's not original. No, 1906. <laughs> <Right. laughs> You're welcome. And it's, uh, <clears throat> 1916 is pretty historical, too. Uh, yeah. Mm -hmm. But it's, if it's not original, then yeah. it's not historical. So what we'd have to do is to construct it and have it, even though it would be built it, I hope, well, it would be built it out of steel, but it would have to look the same. It would have to have a wood facade on it so you wouldn't know the difference. Or else we could look into, and I haven't had time, is to contact some manufacturers of uh, fiberglass to see if that is acceptable to mass historic. Providing they look the same, if we put this, we put fiberglass there. They said that's good for a hundred years. 
Mm -hmm. So you're going down the historical mm -hmm. route that it has to be there. It has, yes. Well, 1906, if she found one at 1906 showing it, then they can't make the argument that it was didn't mm -hmm. exist. But even if it's that, I assume it's some of the photo shop I can, well, I can point out that it's very small. small. That's, that's, that's correct. That's correct. Yeah. So you'll yeah. actually be going yeah. below the cross line. Everything would be coming out with put a foundation yeah. around yeah. the yeah. yeah. thing. Yeah. And we so put a all all foundation. We'd probably pour a cement pad. We'd put our bricks on top of that. We'd have pillars so it would set. And the, what I envision is steel, a steel building structure that would be attached to the building with the eventualist freestanding. Uh, and then a wood facade on it. And we call it a day. Work with these people from the beginning rather than Who would we speak to? Would we speak to some from the historical? We would con first contact a contact mass historic, then I'd have to deal with Bolton historic <laughs> and see where we go from there. I'm sure that this is going to take. Some time. Yeah, there might be even be some grants, you know. There might be. There might be something out there. We haven't had time to research it. The only one has to realize Leslie is taken over from Shell, who was here for 17 years. So we're working our way through that. But she's done good, very good work to this point. We go, oh, she will, but not for this. Brad point. doesn't think so. <laughs> Brad, I, that is. I, I am not saying that one. I. Brad is casting. So I really. Bill. I thought we had this solved. I thought I was gonna say goodbye to 325 grand because I had the start. You, you, you absolutely blew me up tonight. So thank you. You're welcome. Oh, that makes my night. Harold, in, in Boxboro, uh, that tree place is on the, I guess, the south side of 111. They they deal a lot in uh, fiberglass uh, reproductions and, and... And we'll research everything. High and yeah. uh, repair of historical things. And I don't know what it's called. Traditional trees or traditional, traditional. wood or something. They're out in Chicago. There's, there's several uh, column, makers of column, but whatever we do, we'll have to be very comment to the fact that we have to see with the design. Yeah. I, I will be talking, if this is, if we get the yes vote on this, we will have to be talking to Mass Historic and Bolton to see exactly what it is. I did look into wood columns and stay, this company has a cedar one, but they guarantee it for 20 years. They also settled the a fiberglass and they said, well, I said, what's that one? He says, Oh, we'll guarantee it for a hundred years. I said, oh yeah, you're pretty good. You know I'm not going to live that long. Nor are they. <laughs> no, I know. Yeah. <laughs> but it is, they're out of business. All right. Uh, All right. Any, any further questions on the town hall? Uh, is this a firm number or something that's going to change in the near future? This is, the, this is the best we could come to, uh, the architects and engineer could come to on a figure. We believe it's a good one. But it sounds like there's a lot we don't have a scope of work construction. So we don't have there a is. Work. There's a lot of construction that's going to be done here. But for a small mm -hmm. area. I mean it sounds like there's a lot of uncertainty as far as well, it's, yeah, in construction there usually is. Mm -hmm. It's a lot of unknowns. With with the new structure mm -hmm. being primarily mm -hmm. steel to hold up and then the, the rest of the historical aspects would be my, not, if I had my structural. brothers, yes, the steel would be the structure. And the steel would go up and down with frost. No, and no, there'd be no down. movement. There better not be. There would be, uh, we'd be going with four foot footings. Okay, all right. So with, with a, with a, uh, with a, uh, yeah, four foot walls with footings. Yeah. So it would be below, hopefully below the frost level. Steel would be. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Public safety. All right, the public safety. It's, it's strictly repair. And the public safety building, if you, I took Brad around, if you ride around the back of the public safety building, where the fuel tank is, that, where the heating oil tank is, it's lower than your driveway. Water runs to the filler and to where the uh, elect electro electrical controls are, or the monitoring controls are. There has been, this year we've had the chip ice out of where the filler pipe is. And the water was over the top of the filler pipe. Luckily, the clamps were down on it. Um, we are receiving deterioration of the concrete there, and especially where the uh, fuel, the uh, ambulance 
and your fire trucks pull up. There was a crack in it way back when, when it was built. Uh, we put a, uh, on our, uh, our uh, sheet when we did an inspection of it uh, for the uh, for the final and uh, the repair was insufficient and we noted that but uh, it was allowed to go through. We've spent, on a side note, we've spent over ten thousand dollars fixing catch basins in that area already and I took Brad and I showed where the building is taking water in it. So you've got quite a bit of fuel, you've got quite a bit of money that's going to have to be spent to uh, solve that building's problems. Could it be something we could patch and put off if we had to? I suppose I'm open to Pandora's box, but I'm supposed but it's not good. You can go and look yourself, and you can see where the fuel, the, the, uh, the pad is, and you can see it's lower than my driveway. It should be raised, but it's not. Is this an outside estimate also? Yeah, it's a ballpark. It's not a, a, a a firm number because I also have had uh, problems with uh, I think there's a problem in the oil lines coming in but I'm not 100% sure of it. This year has been better than last. Last year was horrible. We kept, the boilers kept shutting down. Now, you said it also includes the sidewalk in the front? No, we won't get to that with this money. Okay, okay. That ought to be deleted out of the... Mm -hmm. yeah. Deleted. I don't believe. Sorry, I, yeah, I don't believe we'll get there. I, I, we may, if we're real lucky. But does it make sense though to have it, have it in one article and make it more if you need to? It's only going to get worse, isn't it? Well, leave it in and leave the, the leave it in. And the most I'll be is wrong. That we can't. We will we'll run out of money beforehand. I would hope that I'd be able to take jackhammer two pads up, four new, mm -hmm. two new pads, and uh, go to the front of the building and uh, take care of the problem with uh, the water that is going into your meeting room and it's wicking up in the in the uh, sheetrock. It's got to be cheaper to do all at the same time. Not really. No, no, because the. Uh, the what's up at the front of the building is going to have to be saw cut. And what I envision there is I'll saw cut it, take that concrete up and put crushed stone in there. So mm -hmm. the water comes in and goes down into the stone instead of uh, reverts back into my building. Mm -hmm. Or your building. <laughs> <laughs> Here we go. <laughs> Let's see what else. Could I have a little more? He's a taxpayer. It's like 1%. <laughs> Is there any chance of getting uh, money back from the contractor? You don't want to go there with me. <laughs> <laughs> so the answer is no. <laughs> yeah, that's correct. We put in a long list. A long, uh, I had Frank Chioda with me and we went around and made a long list. Of that list, nothing was done. And uh, the, the time has passed and we have oh, any yes. legal recourse. Yeah, far as I know, it has. Might be well to run that by Don, just in case. Oh, I have. Oh, you have. Okay. Yeah, yeah. we've already looked into that. Okay. Is there a way to get a more accurate estimate of both, in case you need to have the article be for 40 or 46 or whatever it would be, uh, to make sure that you have enough to do both jobs? Because it seems to me, from the point of view of the town meeting, it would be a lot better to say, this is stuff we need to spend, get it all done, and not have to go back to them next year and say, well, we also have this one. I'd rather have you go in and ask once. I'd rather ask twice because if you look at the amount of work that's here, okay. uh, it's, it's Okay. Is it a bunch of capacity in terms of being able to get it done it's within a reasonable amount of time before I start yelling at you because you didn't spend the money? I think that's what he's saying. It's, it's so much work that the money will sit. It's, uh, remember, we, 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 we go for the two culverts. We, do for the, we go for the culverts, the two culverts. Um, I'd like to do three, but the two, we went for two culverts. Just a culvert in itself is good for the timing up for three or four weeks. 
Now my the others for inspection, and I'll be doing other things in between and trying to run your department. And we've got the town hall, this the overhang. But your crew will not be doing all that. No, no, be, no, no. But what happens, just in terms of assisting well, and so my, my crew will not be. No, it'll be me, mm -hmm. and I'll be out inspecting and working with the contractors. Yeah. And uh, I'm not one that likes to let things go without uh, observing everything. Well, I would, <coughs> I would suggest that either. So, so probably based on what you're saying, I would suggest that you delete the sentence in the summary about the sidewalk. Mm -hmm. And if you're able to squeeze it in, then if that's good for you and good for everybody. But if you don't, then you haven't said that you would. Yeah, but uh, watch how we delete because we've had uh, this problem with um, articles before and we become very specific and all at once we end up with Want be, uh, we've got money, but we can't do it because the article isn't worded correctly for us to do it. It's not like we're saying repair the sidewalk. We're just explaining <coughs> that the sidewalk is higher, causing the water. I mean, yeah, and I mean, if yeah, the other repair is going to... But somebody who reads that is going to think that that's part of the project. Yeah, if it yeah, isn't, yeah, if it is, then that's fine. Right. But I'm just trying to protect you later, that's all. Right. Because somebody will say, oh, yes, but remember when, Article 13, you fix the sidewalk, you were talking about it being, yeah. and that's what will happen. No, the, way the, article is, the way the article is worded, it simply says external repairs, and so that should cover whatever you need Sorry. to do. Mm -hmm. um, so uh, but, well, I'll, I'll make a note on that, Ken, and, um, and Harold, I'll ask that, I'll, I'll let Don know of this conversation. Yeah. and. Well, he doesn't like to change any summaries unless the author of the summary agrees. And so, assuming that Harold is the, unless they're the authors of the summary, then it's really your call as to whether it goes in there from what, because I made a suggestion on another one, and Don said, well, I can't change it because that was submitted by the sponsor, so. But the, the summary is, um I'll ask the selectmen to weigh in here. The summary, is that binding? Or is the, no. art, the article component is correct? Yeah, it's the article that's binding, and the way it's written here is just, a, just external repairs. So this could cover the back, the front, and whatever. It's just you know, external outside repairs. Whether you leave that, the sidewalk in or out, doesn't really it's matter. But probably, yeah. probably taking it out is not going to make any bit of difference, because the summary is not binding. It's the article that's right. binding. So. Okay. The way and with the way that article is worded is fine. So if he has if he has enough money, he can do the back end front. I mean, the right. summaries are really just to you know, give a, a, a more English Layman's explanation of, of, mm -hmm. of what of what the article is about. Um, Damn. Yes. <laughs> yeah. I I say that. Uh, ah, that's it. <laughs> um, but, but, I, but, but Brad, I think, I mean, I mean, I think to Ken's point and to Craig's point from earlier, I think if if it's a repair we know we, we need to do and just make Harold's life a little more difficult, I think planning to get the sidewalk done, whether it's this fiscal year or if it's <coughs> until it carries partially over into next year, I think would make, because a lot of times, you know, I mean, he may go out to bid and find out it's more yeah. than he wants to spend and then you know, adjust the timing on it and give him that flexibility. And let's be clear, but I wouldn't be yelling at Harold because he hadn't done it in the first year. No. If no, we were it's into it's the it's seventh it's year, it might be a different story. Right. Yeah. But, but so I, I, I think I, I, would, I would kind of urge uh, Harold to maybe up that number to include the sidewalk. Because we know it has to be done and we're continuing to do damage to the building by not addressing it in a timely fashion. So you, you can yell at me by your help. How about you want to talk to you? <laughs> <laughs> you weren't sure? Truck. We, uh, this year we did not have. Last year we kept going down. Uh, the borrowers kept shutting off. And all we, we had to bleed them. Uh, cost. Now we've got a stand pipe in there. We're pumping the oil in under pressure. And so we're pumping it at the top and everything's fed off the bottom, which is uh, uh, what you call the stiff leg. And it's, uh, so if it does take old air in, it would expel it out the, uh, the 
the return line. Well, we thought that would work, and then we put a two-pipe system and went on. And we kept going down over and over and over and over again. Now, knock on wood, this year, we have not, for some reason. What we've had is water in the tank. We have had uh, up to six inches of water in it. Uh, this year, I don't know whether everyone's being more careful than locking the caps down. Uh, I don't detect water. But uh, why last year so many times down, I don't have a clue. But uh, this year, we, we didn't have those problems. And I expect it, but I didn't. Uh, but I would, if we would do it, I would like to see those lines and see those inspected to make sure that they're good. It would be foolish to pour another pad on something that's going to give us trouble. That's mm -hmm. All right, so our Article 14 is the um, purchase of a new vehicle, DPW. The price was 115 but knocked down to 104 uh, Capital planning... Um, you know, explained your rationale, Harold, of, you know, looking to move to a certain type of vehicle, um, you know, as opposed to, um, you do, namely a vehicle that you and the department would be able to utilize throughout the entire year, as opposed to a vehicle that is really just m more sits around and, and is only used in the winter time instead of well, you you have have six trucks that two of them only two of the larger trucks can be used on a year-round basis. The rest are dedicated to Toledo winter. This truck here, uh, if you go by the garage, you'll see there's four trucks that sit out front. This would be one that is used 12 months a year. Uh, it's, uh, I asked for a, a, a 550 versus what we had to buy in 350s. We've gone to 550s. They're a heavier truck, but you can still use them as a pickup truck. You can still chase parts with them. Uh, for the most part, no one will ever know that it is a heavier truck and a better truck. I have a report on the 350. The 350 is uh, 10 years old. Uh, I had it done by an independent, uh, if anyone wants to read it, an independent uh, of a, a mechanic to, uh, to look it over and see what was wrong. Um, these are the trucks we were supposed to trade every five. Well, you know, years get bad and things get gone. And we go on and on and on. Now we'll come to a point, and if you read the uh, report on it, you'll see it's it's time for it to go to work someplace else. The uh, what I'm planning what I'm planning to do with this trust is something new for us, not so much for the town of Holman, who has uh, been following them. And this will be the first truck with, uh, that will come in with a uh, with a wing on it. In other words, it'll be doing, as far as a small truck, it's the work of two. And I would say the town would be smart in the future to start looking at trucks with wings. Um, Poland uses them, this, this type of truck with a wing. In other words, a truck has two plops. One in front, one on the side. Um, uh, I would suggest the town go at this slowly so you can train your operators and to be able to uh, run a wing. Uh, if this policy is carried through, I could see a lease truck would cost you more per hour with a wing, but you could cut the number of trucks. So I would say that, uh, that you would definitely see a savings. And how you see it is, we usually on the road have to take four passes. To plow any of our roads with four passes. Uh, 117 is done with multiple trucks. But you do, do four passes. With a wing, you do two. One down, one back. So you could pick the speed, the amount of, you could increase the mileage the truck could do. In doing so, you would cut the, cut the number of trucks you use. Therefore, you would cut your expense. But it's something that's got to be done, I believe, slowly. <coughs> and as new trucks are bought, and put in. I believe um, that that would be the way to go. This would be the first of them. I think next year I'll ask for another truck and we can talk about that at another time. How does this 104 assume that plow setup? It assumes that with a stainless steel body. Right. The steel bodies we buy today, I've already on the trucks we have had, I've had to rebuild those steel bodies. The steel of today is not the steel of yesteryear. 
So we, I think that's an important component. I, I think that is one area that we actually should add to the warrant to explain that it's not simply the, unless I'm missing any, something in here. The 104 is not simply the purchase of a truck, but it is a truck <coughs> with a plow set up. Furthermore, yes. with a wing plow set up. That's the way I want to go. Again, wouldn't this want to go through? Wouldn't this be something that um, Mr. Brown would go would amend this summary? <coughs> That's what he's. Yeah. Yeah. This isn't right. So practically changing. No, no. I I will. Um, <coughs> I, I think I, <clears throat> well, Harold. Let me clarify. I, is it all right if I add the wing yeah, set up? Yes. So yes. I'm not going to do it. I'm just going to. I'll no. have Linda and, and no, Don. No, no, no. no. Add, add the wing set up. No. Add, add the wing set up. Now let, let me ask you a question because mm. um, I m made a comment to myself post last week that I would be more conscientious of, of asking more questions. So. Tell me more about this wing setup and uh, and the training that goes behind it in terms of operators utilizing this. Is there requirements? Is there a certain degree of school hours that is required per year for your operator to do this? Is there a... It's in the field. Okay. Is there an additional license that this person must go out and acquire in order to operate this? No, there's not. All right. So there's someone on your staff presently that can walk into this house and absent of not taking out a couple of mailboxes, which you guys get accused of anyways, can, can operate this uh, with relative ease. At this moment, probably not. But that doesn't mean someone can't be trained and re be ready for the winter. Okay. If, if not, it's easy enough for me to put someone in the seat of the car and go up to hold it. Holden has been doing this with all the trucks, and they cut down the number of trucks they use. They're the only community around here. Do it. Now, the state of Massachusetts does it. I, 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 you know, I, I drive by it on the pike every single day. I, I see it, and, and I like the idea. I'm just trying to take it to the next level of question of, you know, suddenly <coughs> next year I see you in here because your overtime is up, and the explanation is, well, I need to train. You said yes to my wing plow, so I need to go out and train all my guys. No, we'll so that's that. I'm just making we'll sure. No, we'll we'll take care. Well, of that. you would do that. Too. Yeah, we would take we take care of them. <laughs> the training. You realize this truck was only the beginning. Okay, but this truck does. It's just the beginning. Oh, that's that. where he's afraid of. It's one small truck. Huh? You guys have any other questions? Questions from the field? All right. Um, Article 15, cabinet replacement camera bulbs, traffic lights for Steel River, 27,600. All right. Uh, the selectman uh, asked us to uh, start think, think of another way to do this other than replacing everything down there. So once we got the okay and the guidance from uh, selectman to do so, uh, I contacted the several the people I know that are in the field, and we went down there and we examined. I didn't bring the engineer, but brought text down and to see what we could do. So we went down there and looked to see where our major problem was. Providing we now, so our major problem is our cabinet. Our control box is in there. Our controller is three years old. It's our cabinet and the wiring in our cabinet and everything that goes with the cabinet. <coughs> our problem. So we looked at to replace cabinet. Okay, if we replace the cabinet, we replace a big percentage of our problems. So as we're looking at this, we said, I'll say, okay, what can we do to try to modernize this more other than timing? Well, the idea is cameras. So we, this controller we have can handle the cameras. So we put two cameras up. And one would look uh, towards Harvard, and the other would look towards Lancaster in 110. When cars came down, the lights would be changed. If there's no cars, the lights would not, and 117 would stay green. And that's the figure you're looking at, is to change the cabinet, but not the configuration of your uh, intersection. Okay. Now, along with that, it comes that um, I went to a superintendent's meeting, and a fellow from GSA, I think it was, engineering was there, and there is a possibility of a grant, a small city's grant. 
And uh, I did some more investigating and sat with Don on it and Leslie. And that grant, if we apply for it, could give us what we want at that intersection. Yeah, the grant would pay for the engineer and the construction of it to meet what the uh, committee, uh, 117 committee, would want to see a left hand turn and so on. Which is more, which is the next Which is more. Next is which is well, more this, next yeah. Okay. So right. what they're saying is your article for 270 could go away. This article here, and if we didn't get the grant this year, we didn't get the grant. We don't get the grant. We can apply next year. And you've got a set of lights that you don't have to worry about failing. It's going to be just as it is. So this buys us time. Okay. Now, if I can wander on this grant, there's one thing about this grant that's very important. You have one year. You have one year and one year old to engineer it and have all the work done. Mm -hmm. If you're looking for a little extension, you're not going to, you may or may not get it. They may take the money from you. So it's going to be done very quickly. And uh, if I can stress this to the select limits here, you're not going to have a lot of time to have a lot of meetings. This is going to be very quick. You've already got what the committee wants, and we would go with what the committee wants. And that's it. Because the engineering has got to be done quickly, and we've got to go out to bed. I can see construction comes next spring, or start in the winter, mm -hmm. and be in the spring. But you have one year to do it. It's called a shovel ready. You've got to be ready to do it. The, um, oh, where is I going with this? Um, so when would you, have you applied for the grant or when would you? No, the grants come out in, I believe, May or June, and the grants have to be applied for. And I spoke to an engineering firm, um, Bayside Engineering, and uh, they are willing to write the grant for us for nothing if they get the job. And being horizontal, we don't have to go to bid. They have did it. But they were the low bid to do the work anyway for us. Mm -hmm. So we thought it was only fair to go to them. And they have done this before. When are the grants awarded? They go yeah. out in May or June. What would you know? They will have to award in July. Wow. Right after. That's, oh, it's fast. That's oh, it's very fast. Oh, yeah. There's no fooling around. Mm -hmm. yeah. The engineers have got to get their work done. We've got to go to bid. Who is it who gives out the small cities grants? Uh, it's being done by economic development. <clears throat> and before, Don and I looked into this. It was called the Strat Grant. Mm -hmm. And we looked into it about six years ago, I believe. And at that, that one, or seven years ago, that one time, it was all under DOT. Right. And I said, oh, we're, we're in like fun with, with our intersection and our traffic. Well, the next year, they changed it to economic development, and we fell off the the, uh, right off the table. We didn't, we didn't meet anything they had. But they have since changed, and they've put small towns or cities of our side, less than 7,000. And there's a certain percentage of that grant that's set aside for small communities. In our affluence in town, wouldn't it doesn't matter. screw us? No, we have, I think we have a good chance because as far as commerce goes, we're very important. We have a lot of traffic that goes through. We have a lot of people going to work. We have a lot of transportation. The road is, is very much a, a very busy corridor, as you mm -hmm. know. So that's to our benefit. Um, being that we've had some crashes down there, I you know, hate to say it, and we've had a death down there. I really, tongue in cheek, I hate to say it, but that's to our benefit as far as uh, the grants. And, and anything, that's how it's looked at. It's mm -hmm. cold, very cold. So we have a lot of things that I think that are really important. Also, we could also put in uh, pollution with cars sitting and, uh, and so on, and the delays and so on like that. So I, I think we've got a good argument. So the selectmen that have extensive experience, can you guys refresh my memory here? Um, sure. If you recall, last year we, we had an article for 270K. Yes. This was the one that you hold 117 in the state mm -hmm. business. So that article passed. Uh, what we found out after the fact is is that, you know, forgetting about the 117 committee, it was mm -hmm. going to cost more money to, to replace the lights. The 394000 or so, which is reflected in Article 16, 
is the replacement of the of the lights plus whatever engineering would be in order to put the left turn signal in for the one seventeen study committee. Mm -hmm. So so we haven't we haven't spent any of the two hundred and seventy, so basically that, that kind of goes away and, and Article sixteen would replace that. But the fact that we now have the possibility of the grant, so the thinking would be is you don't have Article sixteen. You, mm -hmm. you take it out, but you leave you leave Article fifteen in. To, appro to appropriate the money to, to buy the, the cabinet, the camera, and also that article includes the upgrading of the actual lights in the of the traffic signal LEDs. Mm -hmm. And that article is there just in case, for whatever reason, if we then go out for the grant and it doesn't happen, then we have that fallback. Or within the next year, if for whatever reason the traffic light fails before we can get the work done, we have we can go out and purchase the equipment for the short term fix. So I think the strategy is probably going to be is you get rid of Article 16, you go with Article 15, which which provides us an insurance policy. We apply for the grant, as Harold said, you know we'll either know or not know in July whether yeah. or not, and then at that point in time we can make a decision. You know should we just spend the 26-7 or 27.6 and, and buy us some time and then maybe apply for the grant next year or whatever the cycle. Or put 16 back on saying that, you know, we, I would presume we'd get back the reasons why we weren't approved for the grant right. and then next it's year at this time, right, right. maybe well, we, Article 16 is back. Well, back we, we, we could, but the thing is maybe, maybe we don't. I mean, at least for the mm -hmm. short term, mm -hmm. we have a functional traffic light. Yep. We have better timing, and it gives us some, some breathing room for what, if and when we want to do that. The grant would be for the whole amount? Yep. Yes. yes. Well, engineering and amount. And I would, uh, that's up to the Board of Selectmen to do it, but I wouldn't look at the, the 270 or 395 that is swell to or whatever the figure was of, I would move further. I would move further out and have it engineered so you could have that left lane and you could have everything. And it would prob we'd probably be talking, I don't know, whatever would be talking for money. I mean, there's uh, no sense selling this out short if we can get this. Yeah, but I, but I think for right now, you know, go, 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 go with the Article 15 mm -hmm. to at least appropriate mm -hmm. the money for the short term fix. We do the grant and then we see what happens. Yeah, then, take out yeah. 16. Yeah. And, then, and, and the cabinet you have and the, and the controllers and the cameras could be used again. Or B, we just take those away and put them in storage mm -hmm. and let them set. And if our controller goes down, we have a good controller that can set in there. Uh, if a camera fails, we have an extra camera. Or we use them. Either way, we're not, whatever we're doing, we're not going to waste. Yeah. Right. Yeah, we wouldn't have to worry about the warranty going bad in here. I mean, we did that with something that we were talking about sitting up for a while. Is it computers? I don't remember. Yeah. But we put something away, and by the time we used it, mm -hmm. the warranties were no. The, the warranty on, on our, our controller we have down there is gone anyway. But it's still a good controller. Um, if we wanted to stay with it, we could stay with it. It's a modern one. If we didn't, we could easily just, the new cabinet would, they'll say it got struck with lightning. Well, we already got one. We'll just put ours back in. So it gives us a lot of options. Tom, with uh, our cheaper. Yeah. Tom, mm -hmm. And way cheaper. Right. Oh. Yeah. So, Mr. Brown, so with the grant, we're going to write the grant for the 117 committee ask. Is that it? That's correct. Right. Oh, that's correct. Yeah. We would ask, we would both get that recommendation that they made. <coughs> And that was with a left-hand turn, and everything was asked in that committee. Mm -hmm. So, do you need any authority from us or from the committee for to to, to move forward on that? And I would um, I would say that I think the board of selectmen should chime in on it. Yeah, no, we don't the, we don't need anything from the committee. It's it's the the board. Just, if the board chooses, we to. just basically if we decide to, to go for the go for the grant, then then Don. Don and Harold will right. work with the you contract. Just an outline, you say who will write, who'll write the grant. Uh, the grant's not going to cost us anything to no. be written because if we if we get the, that contractor who wrote the grant gets the work. He's, so. he's uh, positive enough about to say that he will write it 
at no cost. And he gets the engineering work? He gets the engineering work. Right. He, he was earning a little he better. Was right. Right. Yeah. Yeah. And he yeah. was a little better. Yeah. On horizontal, you don't even have to go with the lowest bidder. You can go with whoever you wish. But he, I, I know the company, Bayside, they do a lot of work. There's about four real prominent ones, and they're one of them. There's no town match requirement? No. 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 100% reimbursement. 100%. Mm -hmm. It used to be 70, but now it's 100%. Yeah. <laughs> but if it's reimbursement, would we have to appropriate the money and then get reimbursed? I have to ask that question. I don't know. Well, that would be a reason to leave the article in. I, I don't. I don't think. I don't think it's a. I, I, to the best of my knowledge, on the top, I don't think it's a reimbursement. Mm -hmm. So I don't think we need to have. Yeah, it could be a regular grant. I think it's a regular. It's a regular grant. You're right because if you don't do it in a year time, a year right, period of time, it was stressed. They can pull it. <coughs> could you ask for an extension? Only a very short one. Yeah. And then they take the money. So the money. No, okay. you're right. You're right, Stan. As long as you can spend it without. Yeah. Preparation. That's fine. Mm -hmm. Uh, any any other questions? With uh, Article 15, what's the estimated use for one? Of the, uh, of the unit? Of the unit. Uh, the cabin. Like yeah, ten yeah. years. What's this one? Uh, this one was put in 1970, so 70 minus 16 uh, would be 30, be 47 years. Okay, so it's <laughs> long. Good time. <laughs> longer than your trucks. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> All right. Article 17. Uh, purchase new tract a load of backhoe. Okay. 93,000. This one started out at about 50. Uh, it started at 157, to be quite exact. It started at 157 because that's what I was given the figure by a manufacturer. And uh, I had a little time to talk to other manufacturers and other suppliers. Uh, that uh, it could, the, uh, the amount came down. Now, I also looked into leasing, and I think you have the report on leasing. Mm -hmm. And the leasing uh, of one cost us uh, 20, I believe 23,000? 23,000 yeah, 23, for lease. Yeah. Um, if you take the 93,520 and divide it by five, you'll find that uh, this tract is, uh, it's, less money for us to buy it. And the reason being, this tractor, if you you and I went out to buy it, it would be, I, I'm going to quote a figure of $158,000. That's what that tractor would cost us. Being a, us at being tech, being the municipality, the manufacturers and uh, want to see their equipment in our yards because it's good advertisement for it. So after talking uh, conversations with uh, Case, JCB, Caterpillar, and John Deere, okay? New Holland never did get back to me. They all came in, and they all came in really close except for Deere. Deere was higher. Uh, JCB and Case were right together, and uh, what shocked me was Caterpillar. Caterpillar came in under them all, and I expect Caterpillar to be the, above that. Caterpillar wants to see their backhoes out here and their equipment owned by municipalities. If we were looking at 157 or something like that, I could see uh, an argument for leasing. Being I'm looking at 93,000, and, and in that 93,000, what I put in, and I haven't discussed this with Don yet, or the selectmen, is the trade our old 1989 cat load of the 926. Or it's 86. So anyway, it's the oldest one. Trade that loader. Of course, the backhoe, this engine is gone, and put those into the trade. So that helped bring it down to ninety-three thousand uh, dollars. The backhoe we have now is thirty years old. I would expect this uh, machine to be in what it is, and I would expect it to be able to match that. Uh, of course, it depends on usage and how much you use it, and so on. But this this was is a uh, very good machine, and why I why I could get rid of a loader is this tractor is if we our nine thirty eight goes down and doesn't run load, load can't load in the winter this tractor can load it's mm -hmm. big enough to do the loading it'll be a little slower but it can do the work. And also I gained which I didn't buy this with this this I gained versatilities with this tractor where eventually 
I would hope that uh, there would be a room put in for it to do uh, intersections and small work. It's just more versatile machine. It's something we use, can use 12 months a year. We do use it and come summertime, the backhoes are very important to us to do on drainage work especially. All right. Now, Capital Planning disapproved that article had at the bottom of their list, so can you comment on that or what the impact would be if we didn't do that this year? There would be a lot of drainage work and a lot of trenches that wouldn't be opened up for drainage. There would be a lot of, uh, this winter you'd see a lot more icing. I think what they put in is for leasing it. They, we, when we went to capital planning, we were having that discussion before Harold did a lot of the research on it, thinking that in the long run the leasing would be better, but as you can see, finding out that yeah, and, and I purchase and, and again, this was you, every time you made a phone call, and we'd find something else out or something. So, and I think it's just the definitions that everyone's using because I, I agree. I saw the numbers, and the purchase is more advantageous than the buy. Um, and so that makes all the sense in the world that when they were to see you, you guys would have. We were looking at one fifty-seven. Right. Yeah. That's what we were looking. But then they came there. What they said to us was it, it wasn't, I mean, it, lease. I guess, yeah, it's the same thing, right? They were strictly looking at it from a perspective of renting on a need to use basis. So if, yeah. if all of a sudden, because the, the, what I heard from Capital Planning was we're going to take this next year to see how much you guys use the tractor, right? So if you need it for a week, you know, you go out and rent it from, you know, Hertz Rental at 1200 for the mm -hmm. week, and then you turn it back to them, right? And they, they were going to help keep track of that. So that was their takeaway and why it landed on the bottom of the list. And that's when it was $157,000. Yeah, and then, and then also, I think also what took place is from that decision, Harold was also looking at equipment coming down, well, let me get rid of that and that, and I can have this and more versatility all throughout the year. So if, if that's the case, you know, capital planning's idea of just going out and renting on a per use, that capital planning was talking about a, a piece of equipment that was basically just used to clean catch basins, yes. as I recall. No, this, this, uh, that, that would be a catch basin cleaner. This, this machine wouldn't do that. Mm -hmm. It would do trenching, be work on the road, and work as a loader. Right. Uh, it, our old tractor actually, come summertime, the loader sits. And that's a machine that goes out and does the work. Mm -hmm. um, if you were going to lease, if we were going to do as you said, you would have to move some money into our accounts for it. Because the money's not there now. Mm -hmm. Is there a spreadsheet that shows the uh, purchase versus lease? You know, like 10 years of cash flow or 37 years of cash flow or whatever? Uh, we did a or net present costs. We did. Okay. We, we did. We did. We want, did a lease versus. We did lease versus purchase. It has the thirty-year figure. Do we have a copy of the lease agreement? No, the lease agreement is uh, the one that's the most uh, is taken from the state business. Is uh, I have a lease from Case too, uh, but what they were quoting us was. Um, Page eight. Page eight. Uh, they were quoting us a figure of two thousand seventy dollars a month. Yeah. So if we rented, we leased that thing for three months. You're talking six thousand dollars. Versus, and at the, at the end of that, you wouldn't have anything. You would have nothing. You got it. If, if you're talking about that's a lease figure, my guess is renting it is going to be more. No, this is a rental figure. This is a rental, 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 rental or lease. This is a rental. This is a rental. Um, oh, yeah, there it is. Here's a spreadsheet. Uh, five years. Um, Yeah, I have a yeah, okay. Can I use your Okay, uh, Schmidt Equipment, theirs was a five-year lease, 
at the yearly cost of $22,800. Perks was $24,840. South of the border, which is Case, was $20,400. And Milton Cat was $24,940. And JCB was the least expensive at $16,068. But I believe JCB figured into their lease the the um, 922 926 loader, as I believe, is what they figured into their lease. So their lease really didn't reflect that. Mm -hmm. This is new equipment we lease, and then you have an option to buy at the end. Or? Yeah, this uh, some of these, when they call them leases, really aren't leases; they're purchases. Uh, is what they are. And did Kent, I don't see JCB 60 months. You own, uh, 60 months, you own a 23,000 uh, true lease special. Which, if that's the case, if so, what you're saying okay. is at the end of five years, you, you pay twenty three thousand and you own it outright. No, no, mm -hmm. no, it's gone. Right. Yeah. Bye bye. You pay eighteen something a year and own it. No, is that, the, I, I thought it was at least to buy, at no. least with so the option to buy on the end. No. Because the five year lease. No, on JCB it, comes out to eighty grand. Yes, it's sixteen thousand a year. No, it's uh yeah. If you're going to buy it, you're going to buy it at the price it's worth then. Mm -hmm. Right. So basically, I looked at it well when I got after I uh, looked at what Cat wanted for that, and if we divide that ninety three thousand by five, uh, eighteen thousand seven hundred twelve. Yeah, we're. we're we're ahead of the game to buy it and uh, borrow the money. That's only that, yeah. And I assume its lifetime is 20 years. Mm -hmm. The machine? We get you know, I, I can say this <laughs> tongue in cheek. I can see this doing machine doing 25 or better. Sure. They, they easily see it. This is a caterpillar. <clears throat> You've got old caterpillars crawling all over the place there. I mean, we're looking at a 1986 uh, catalog, the 926, and it's, for a small contract, it is a viable machine. You're going to put some new fenders on it, put a paint job, and you got a good machine. Uh, age, age with equipment doesn't really count in. It's uh, how well they've been maintained, and uh, that's, that's the big thing. thing. That's trying to be concerned. Well, you put uh, this uh, compared with the truck more or less important. The truck won't go and plow the ship coming up. Not without a lot of work. A lot of maintenance work. The, what I get the list is that this machine here, if we don't have this machine, I don't know, I, I don't, I'm going to have to come back to the advisory and ask for probably about 27000 to hire in a hole. I've got some drainage problems that need to be cleaned up. Specifically back right? That's right. I'm waiting for that. The minute I said that, I knew it. But I, the minute I said that, I knew that was going to come. But so what? I just, I couldn't. Does that make the back more important than the truck? Tell me what kind of a winter I'm going to have, and I'll tell you. Right. Well, I need to do, I need both machines. We've been putting this off and putting this off. I don't know how many years I've asked for a new backhoe, and how many years we've been going on about trucks. And th this just happens to be it. Uh, last article for you guys. Uh, for repair, sander, body replacement, uh, $65,000. Yes. I, I mean, <coughs> The, the, I don't know if we have to talk about it, but I, I, you're, yeah, I'll, I'll let you. Yeah, okay. Thank you very much. <laughs> well, no, it's just the replacement, it says it right there, in my opinion, replacement of a sander that is 30 years old. <laughs> it, it, it actually was bought, uh, Ken was, was back, would you, were you? Select me? No, it goes way back. When the bar, All of this was bought with Ken was yeah. 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 superintendent. Right. Yeah. Yeah. He bought that. Okay, I'm but it, but it's amazing, uh, and I will progress on this. 
It's a that's a Santa that's 30 years old, 30, 30 or 35 years old. I can't get a steel body today to go one cabin chassis, just one. That's Sander myself. I have moved from three different cabs and chassis. It's amazing. The steel is fantastic. What it is is the ribbing has all gone. Uh, we're just not going to see that. It, it's a disgusting situation we have in this country with the quality that's a, of, of the out. steel that's coming out. Yeah, it's horrible. Yep. It's horrible. It's horrible. The bodies are rotting from the inside out. It's sickening. And there I'm looking at 30 years. Okay, yeah, we sandblasted and have the epoxy painted and we've done those things. We'll put new chains on it and everything. The same frame is there. It's, it's just come to its end of its life. Now, we're going to be putting that on a used truck. <coughs> and I would hope that the body we use someday in the future, when that cabin chassis dies, they pick that body up and slide that out and slide that, with that onto a new cabin chassis because we're going to buy stainless. And I'm looking at a Swanson because it's the heaviest one I can find. Where can you get it though? I don't know. It's the old dual. I don't know if it can do another winter. We'll be down to Sander. And if I've been, the way this, this year has been, I've been down to Sander every day, every storm because of repair work. And again, it was a mild winter too, so. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. All right. How you guys feel? I always feel so uplifting after. It warms the cockles of my heart. <laughs> this, oh yeah, it's a pawn your office. Oh, I'd hate to uh, leave you without having something to think about. Yes. Well, um, oh, yeah, there's the cat. There it is. Cat motor. No, it's a 1989. The 926s. All right. Well, if there's no other questions, uh, thank you guys for uh, taking time to come in and for all that you do for the town of Bowling. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Have a wonderful evening. Thank you. Thank you. Remember, it's your equipment, your changing brand. Hey, here we go back. Back to me. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. If you lose your day job. <laughs> For any of you election aficionados, <laughs> yes. Trump has won in Florida. Rubio's yeah. running out. Oh, did he? Yeah. Rubio's dropped out. And, um, yeah. Kasich is running about eight points ahead in Ohio. So Who is? And, Kasich. And Clinton is took it? Ohio. Clinton took everything by huge margin. Ah. <laughs> Cruz is pretty <laughs> close to Trump in Missouri and North Carolina, but still a little behind him. All right. So at this point, um, any questions from you guys? I was thinking we may try and get through um, a few more articles. Sounds good. Mm -hmm. um, question that I have, I guess, is when do we discuss financing as to how all these various articles can pay for it? Um, because it might have some effect on how we vote, and mm -hmm. I presume we do that in conjunction with the selectmen, or do they simply decide and recommend to us, or what? Yeah, um, oh, that's a good point. I, I, uh, I yet to put together that spreadsheet, kind of laying out free cash. Yeah. Um, Well, I'll ask you guys. So, uh, I, I completely hear what Ken is saying because we we have done that, and in the past, and the way we have we've kind of laid out financing or tied financing to certain articles, and that has absolutely influenced how how uh, folks have voted on articles. Um, I guess I just I haven't I haven't focused that much on it this year, just because. 
I, I know the number available of free cash is so much smaller relative to <clears throat> all the wants. And uh, just facing a, a fairly healthy amount of borrowing. Um, but the selectmen are here. I mean, I'll ask you guys. Um, any thoughts? I mean, we, we had talked coming out of last year um, and the, the conversation between the selectmen advisory was, you, you know, in terms of the floor. I mean, you guys were looking for, I don't know, it was 400. We were comfortable at 250. I think we settled on three as a floor. No, you won. You got, it was 250. No, 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 I, I no, would remember 250. No, we compromised. Yeah, we, I thought we, the compromise was on the uh, the snow and ice thing. No, we, no, we definitely compromised because we were all pissed off when we were like, okay. Um, okay. all right. Yeah, I, I would remember 250. It okay. wasn't 250. No, it was three and a quarter. It was three. Yeah. Either three or three and a quarter. Something like that. Yeah. I can't remember. So, ah. <coughs> uh, well, I mean, we don't have much room now because three cash is sitting at like six and change. Six yeah, quarters. six and, you know, know that 50 just left the building for an overspend. <laughs> yes, Dan? Um, I wouldn't worry about 50 for an overspend. There'll mm -hmm. be that much loose change for her to find. Yeah. Um, you, I, I have to operate a week behind. We uh, all are. Oh, okay. But uh, you're showing unused tax levy of minus almost 200000 now. And if you have a target of 250000 that would be 450 of your 640 So, so you're talking less than um, 200000 that you could put toward articles, everything else. Would it, anything above two hundred thousand would have to be borrowed, I think. Mm -hmm. And um, if the selectman foolishly <laughs> would you do a three hundred or three hundred and fifty thousand free cash target, then you're down to you know like the hundred and twenty-five thousand is all you can do for articles, and and uh, um, the rest yeah. would have to be borrowed. So I think you're talking about borrowing on most all of this stuff because some of it you can't borrow on so you, you what, what you're not allowed to borrow on um will probably chew up all the free cash you've got left and so almost anything you can borrow on is probably what you'll have to do all right you know what let's um we had a, a pretty healthy discussion that that impacts a lot of um various departments early on with ted going through electricity and you know so what we'll, why don't we switch gears and we'll we'll go through the various budgets, uh, approve those line items on uh, on fuel, um, get through some minutes, um, and um, I'll work on that spreadsheet to kind of lay out free cash so we have a better understanding of what we're looking at, and we'll tackle those articles, the remaining articles next Tuesday, and at the same time I will again see if we can get capital planning in. Um, so, you guys are good with that? All right. So if we first, um, we just go down, um, you know, Ted's uh, first page here. Uh, we've got library. Um, you lost your own spreadsheet, Ted? Here it is. All right. <laughs> I didn't take okay. it. So, uh, library is 610, and um, so the proposal is uh, 17,000 for electricity. Um, so presently in the warrant, it's at 18. Oh no, it, it, we we already did put it at 17. So. All right, so we've got that squared away. <coughs> Town Hall, 192. The electric at 6,500. 
the request and Ted, based upon your spreadsheet and the analysis, the recommendation would be 68. Is that correct? Correct. Okay. So I'll entertain a motion to approve Town Hall Electric, move from 6,500 to 6,800. All those in favor, say aye. 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 All those opposed? Is the rest of town hall already approved or not? Uh, it was. Yep. All right. So, <coughs> Houghton Building. Let's see. Where is it? It's under maintenance. You can't find it. <coughs> it's buried. It's under town building maintenance. Oh, town building. All right. So, 190 town building Maybe maintenance. Maybe next year. Yeah. It's in that. It's in that 93711 number, huh, Ted? Yep. All right. So. I make a request to pull it out. Yeah. Um, we were trying to get that. Uh, I'm still going. I'm still going to try to. Um, but there was just. Uh, yeah. No. We have. We have an email in. You know, trying to get. See what we can do to get that. Uh, Different line. Exactly. That'd be great. Um, but Houghton and so yes, yeah, so we really can't figure that out until we get a better handle on that. Yeah. So it's, all right. Yeah. Has yeah. Tell Buildings been approved as a unit already? It has. So if, so if we determine that whatever it is is within the 93711, then we don't have to do anything. Well, what we're talking about, Ken, was trying to get a sense of what exactly, within the 93711 in maintenance, right. what of that is, elect right, is electric. And then we were going to have a separate line. Fine. but. Even if you don't have a separate line, once you know what what you want the electrical to be, if it turns out to be such that it fits into the ninety three seven eleven, then you really you, yeah. Then as far as the bottom line on town buildings, you're okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right. So DPW. Twenty one. We're twenty one. And is one on Four twenty one electric eight thousand is in the budget and the request is to move to five thousand. So I'll have to take a motion to move uh, DPW electric from eight thousand to five thousand. Mm -hmm. Second. All those in favor say aye. 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 Those opposed? Sorry, that was four twenty one. Yeah, yes, sir. Uh, fire safety. Fire safety. See that was public safety, right? Two hundred electric thirty-seven five hundred. And therefore, we would move that to forty-two thousand. So, the I'll entertain a motion to move public safety electric thirty-seven five hundred to forty-two thousand. Second. All those in favor, say aye. 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 Those opposed. Two thousand fire station. That's two twenty. So that just stays the same. Uh, yeah, that's fifty kilo over there. Yeah. It's all right. 
infestation. You think by now I'd have these memorized? You know I had so, the list. 433. <laughs> Transfer station, 433. All right, electric. In the budget, 2000, and we're going to move that to 1300. So I'll entertain a motion to move transfer station electric from 2000 to 1300. So moved. Second. All right. All those in favor say aye. 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 All those opposed? All right. Traffic lights. Next, you're up with the numbers. Uh, street lighting is 424. That's right. Street lighting, 424. Electric is... Oh, that, that we have traffic lights. I skipped over that one. They're separate. Yeah. Traffic lights, 293. 293 electric 1500 and proposal move to 1300. So moved. Second. All right. All those in favor of moving from 15 to 1300, say aye. 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 All those opposed? Okay. Now we go to traffic uh, street lights, which is. Same. 420, so 424. 424. And if we already approved 424? No, I, I messed up. Uh, yeah, you can. I mean, did we ever approve it in the past? We did. All right, well, it's the same number, so you don't need to act. Oh, that's right. There you go. All right. So now we move on to page two. I got it. Entertain a motion to move that to 5600. Second. All those in favor of moving Town Hall heating from 6306 to 5600. Say aye. 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 Those opposed? Aye. 5600. Um, anything else under Town Hall? No. All right. Houghton Building. Oh, we've got. Mm -hmm. yes. What is it in? Oh, that's the so one buried in the uh, yeah, town building. Yeah. <coughs> All right. So See, I, I get separate numbers. Yeah. And oil and other All things. right. So we're just going to have to leave that. Yeah. Good. See, mm -hmm. under town buildings, that 3300 that a county put up there, that's, that's what that is. If you look at 190. Oh! That's that right. 3300 heating is the uh, budget request. Mm-hmm. Building, yeah. Okay. But we know the highest gallons per fiscal year for three years, so 20, right. 28 should do it. All right. So town, buildings, heating, uh, entertain a motion to change heating from 3300 to 2800. So moved. Second. Second. All those in favor say aye. 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 All right. Um, 2800. So, nothing else on hold. All right. So, DPW. <coughs> uh, 421. And so, 421 heating. For 30, we're just keeping up the keep same. Yes. While we're here, 
Let's move to gasoline. And gasoline is at 18,000. And the request the, to move to 7,700. Entertain a motion to move gas 18,000 to 7,700. So Second. All those in favor say aye. 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 And then we move to diesel. That's 8,011 in the budget request. We move that to 5,500. Entertain a motion to make that happen. Second. Second. Oh, yeah. All right. All those in favor of taking highway diesel from 8111 to 5500. Aye. Aye. All those opposed? Aye. Um, so then. Well, I have a sort of procedural question. Um, is the requested column to be changed or just the advisory approved? Um, yeah, I'm. I'm going to change the have the, the column advisory approved. Okay. <clears throat> Snow and sand is going to be under. I don't know if that's separate, I guess. Yeah. So. Yeah. Oh, so just twenty-four twenty-three, right? And Snow and sand is going to. Um, at least for gas, that's going to remain the same. I think so. All right. And snow and sand, diesel, from 9,000 to 14. Entertain a motion to move snow and sand diesel from... No, we can't because that's going to that's move the uh, 180,000. Mm. change if you change one of the line items you just it ends up changing the total doesn't it I mean that's not a big deal is it we're always we're trying to keep more. that 180 pardon I said based upon Ted's rationale yeah, it gives them more that's right so you would just uh, but that. I'm yeah oh, what I, is see, oh, I see that's right because of the weight right, right. right. yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. that's right uh, yeah, so just leave it yep yeah. If somebody wants to chug numbers, take 64.50 gallons of diesel and use five or ten miles per gallon and 63 miles of road in town. Yeah, but I if you think just, there's enough fuel there. But if we just leave it at 180, then that's just right. yeah. yeah, I forgot about that. Yeah. Okay, so the ninth, the ninth, we leave it at 9,000. Yeah. Okay, good. All right, so um, I've been working from the top down, but with the department going. So let's head to um, fire and safety. Fire and safety. Two twenty. That's fire. Fire and safety. So that's thirteen. Well, oh, that's probably in public safety, right? Heating, and I'll go ahead. Fourteen, twenty, there it is. All right, um, so 200, public safety, heating, budgeted requested number is 14,129, uh, and I'll entertain a motion to move that to 13,500. So moved. Second. All those in favor say aye. Aye. All right. All those opposed? All right. And now library for paying six. Or six ten. Six ten. <coughs> All right. 
Presently in the budget, 19,220. Oh, we already, already approved that 15.5. All right. So we're going to go So we're going to move that. So the request is to move that from 15.5 to 15,800. Yeah. Do, do I have a motion? Or I'll, I'll a motion to, to do that? Mm -hmm. Second. Mm -hmm. All those in favor, say aye. 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 All those opposed? Look at that. I can't say that we're not giving the library more money after what took place a couple weeks ago. I feel, I feel better. Police. Uh, that's right. Fire staying the same, and we already covered DPW, snow, police. Two ten. Two ten. All right. <clears throat> Gasoline. Twenty two thousand, and I would entertain a motion to move that to fourteen thousand two hundred. So move. So if you entertain a motion. That means I should make a motion, mm -hmm. right? Just did. Mm -hmm. No. No, I just want to do actual verbiage. <laughs> that's what, I don't know, that's the way I always seem to do it. That's okay. All right. Um, um, the correct, well, I am ready with that. I like some of the yeah. motion, our entertaining motion. Yeah. If if you're entertaining a motion but don't say what the motion is, then, then someone, someone has to say it. To say it. But if you and Brad go through, I'll I'll, be, I'll entertain a motion or whatever up to, to two. Ba, 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 yeah. Right. Then somebody can say something. Okay. Sometimes he does. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. yeah. Thank you. Let's take keep you guys on your toes. I guess I don't know. Um, all right. So that would be to. So we have a motion and a second uh, to move. Police gas from twenty two to fourteen thousand two hundred. Um, all those in favor say aye. 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 All those opposed? All right, so fourteen thousand two hundred. Counts on aging is remaining the same. Uh, diesel fire. Fire department is two twenty. Thirty two seventy seven. All right. So I take a motion to take diesel from 3277 to uh, 2500. I so move. Second. All those in favor say aye. 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 All those opposed? All right. Fire and ambulance, they just split things. So. All right. It's the same. So we'll do that down there. Where is that diesel? Ambulance two thirty one. But I'll go through it. Um, ambulance uh, entertain a motion to move from thirty two seventy seven to twenty five hundred. Second. All those in favor, say aye. 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 All those opposed. Records for fiscal 16, are they going to be about the same as those? Of All right. Uh, I, don't, I don't know yet. Yeah. Yeah. So then we have... We've got the 15, the 16,000, but the 16... Do we hit? Yeah, yeah. 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 that's it. Fire is a $43 yeah. per... Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. ...for a generator. All right. Okay. <laughs> So I'm just quickly going through the looking through the budget here. We, we covered moderator last week, um, but that wasn't updated. We covered advisory. Let's see. Whoops. So just looking for any budgets that we haven't approved. We covered Board of Appeals last week. Agriculture we covered. Let's see. Let's see. Energy Committee. Does that ring a bell? No, oh, that's it's done anyway. Yeah. Um, okay. 
that she was not going to say that I could not go. Capital Hall of Culverts. I'm sorry? The uh, Culverts. Uh, yeah, there. so we. No. Or, no, we, I guess no. we need to see how they're paid for. Yeah, 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 but budget. he is just going through yeah. all the budgets to make sure that we've approved them all. Oh, oh. Yeah, so we yeah, yeah. yeah. any of the public safety but it's okay. <laughs> right. but yeah so so Ken I think you know we did it right to say we it does not seem oh, to show I know that, but I know because we don't have an updated budget but hold on one second let me just just gonna take a look at the last thing. So yeah, I'm just looking at I'm just looking at the uh, the Ken's <coughs> notes from last week. Um, well, we haven't done the library yet because they were going to come back with new book numbers. At least my recollection is we haven't thought we did. I thought we did. Right. Yeah, I was. services. Yeah, they're co coming in next week. Now, that shows is approved already though, doesn't it? Fire and ambulance now. No, human services. Um, I mean, the Board of Health and Nursing and Veteran Services are all... Right, but there's that... Yeah, but, uh, group, whatever. 590, Ken? Yeah. Um, well, they're the ones that are coming in. Yeah. So the main thing we need on, on the public safety ones is just all the numbers from last week and stuff adjusted so that we have the final set of numbers from all mm -hmm. the departments. Yes. Okay. Yeah. So we can we can take care of all uh, police, fire, ambulance next week. Um, and then, oh, Dawn sent a note, let's see here, it was on the, um, NRSD assessment. I four point. Oh, yeah, I calculated that out, Boy. The, for the increase at least, the increase is 558, 260.87. Well, wait a second. I'm sorry. If that 4.4 is correct, then it's, uh, then the increase from last year is $558,260.87. I didn't say, I didn't figure that out for the total, but but I think we have to remember that that's uh, an estimate only at the moment that they'll have to actually give us the, the correct number, but that's what he was saying as it was approved at essentially 4.4. I remember um, sh there was a woman in and uh, she was filling in, I want to say for her spouse, and she w took us through the budget. We had some questions, so she's like, can I go back and sit down and work the math? She came back up, we talked. Oh, that way, and that's then we, right, I remember. I do remember. Right? Yeah. Um, yes, and I that. Yeah, so that's, I'm trying to, He's Don sent uh, Does anybody know if we've been given a Minuteman number? Yeah, I, I, I so I'm sort of looking at right here. I'm just trying to decipher all the all the Yeah, I gotta really talk to Don and say, you know what Don, instead of the spread, just tell me what the number is. He wants me to pour through this spreadsheet. Of course, I should have done that before the meeting started. All right, you know what? The Minuteman spreadsheet? Yeah. Yeah, that they gave out at Friday. Yeah. yeah. So, yeah. Um, yeah, that has it on there. Those will, oh, I mean, 
Yeah, but we can take care of those next week as well because it's not as if we're going to be having a deliberation on them. All right. <laughs> Mr. Chairman? Yes, sir. I added up all the articles that couldn't be financed. Oh. Uh, and if you have a 250000 cash target, that leaves 88000 but it doesn't include the retroactive pay for fiscal 16 for the police and the dispatch, which if it's the same as the retroactive for 15, <coughs> takes you pretty much to zero. So everything that's a capital project would have to be borrowed for, I think. Mm -hmm. All right, so yeah, so because you, what you said, so you're saying the retroactive pays those must be you can't borrow for those. Right. Yeah, everything else. And I don't think you can borrow for the fire engine repairs. Yeah, we'll. Um, I'll put all that together. Here's the Minuteman thing. Um, where is Paul? Assessments three hundred ninety thousand nine hundred ninety five dollars. That sound right? Do you say three ninety eight eight ten? Three hundred ninety nine hundred ninety five. That's, always a, always that's a combination of our minimum contribution transportation, something called other operating assessment, and our debt. Yeah, you know what? I can't. I can't pull that off my phone. So, oh, uh, we'll get those numbers and put that in. Uh, did any of you guys have a chance to take a look at um, the minutes that were in hard copy? I know we have we have Ken's minutes from. Uh, last week, and my thought is, um, we just go in. If we go in alphabetical order with our last names, they end up landing back at Ken. So Ken ends up doing the minutes, um, sends them over, you know, and we just send accordingly, alphabetically to our last name, making. Um, Ken, I used to uh, right. recommend that we. That once we get them, we actually make the edits, or do do you want us to redline them and send? Well, it, I think it would be helpful to whoever makes the changes to have a redline, um, and that way, then they can just be all incorporated and um, and then sent to Linda for printing to. The next I did it out of order. I just edited it. Well, because we didn't have any. There was no. Yeah. 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 So is well, and I didn't realize from yeah. what from what Don was saying that that we that we could just distribute it amongst ourselves without violating anything. So if that's true, then then we can easily do that. And so you just tell me who to send it to. So it starts with you. Oh, Benjamin. So okay. So just. So I just send it to the first person and then... And then we'll just send it around and then land back at you? That's fine. Okay. I think I added a word and put a couple of hyphens in. Something really significant. Yeah, I saw what you did that was that was trivial, but, but it, that's why it's so right. important that it be highlighted because then it's very easy to to not have people duplicate efforts or something. That's fine. Um, this minutes back. Has everyone had a chance to next, use next week? Next week? Yeah. Call it a night. Done. Toast. All right. <laughs> <laughs> it's good. Yeah. <laughs> I just I get so much energy well, tonight. You know, yeah. The only question I have, I guess, yeah. is about the plan board articles. Yes. Uh, do you need to have them in to discuss them, or do we know enough to to vote on them without? Um, um, 
can uh, I'll be honest with you I have not I personally have not gone through the the um, the planning board articles those are th they're nauseating for me <laughs> do you need it I guess do you need to have them here to explain them or do you just need time to read them um, yeah I mean just need time to read them but I I, uh, I, I think it's it's always been helpful to have them in um, were they invited I sent out I did send a request but I couldn't see either we ran out of time to open meeting law or something right. so I mean it's it's been a challenging week with yes with well, Linda and uh, so I guess what I would suggest is that we announce that we're going to vote on those articles next week and if they and invite them to come and if they choose to come then they can explain it and if they're not here then we'll do it based on what's well, written the, the administrator the uh, Planning board administrator could certainly come in and explain what they're trying to do. Well, that's fine. I'm, sure. Sure. I'm, yeah. just, I'm just saying. I'm just saying we need to vote no matter what. And yes. So, so give them the opportunity to come in, but if they're yeah. not here, then we just have to go over and not. Yeah. No. And uh, sure. I, I misunderstood. Sure. I mean, your administrator yeah. would be fine. I, I misunderstood. So, so yeah. I mean, that's. Um, th there's no doubt. Next week. I mean, we've got to. We're gonna get through. Yes. We're gonna get through these. Um, and then I was, uh, you know, I found the the advisory committee statement for from last year, um, and I know there's a ton of numbers in this that we're still working on, we got to figure out. But my, I was wondering if I got this as a, um, I have it as somewhere, but I get it to someone, and we basically just essentially get it ready, start over the course of this next couple weeks start to get this because it, it always comes down to the wire when we when we wrap all this up you know it, it's always you know down to the wire on we're all in agreement with advisory and selectmen we finalize everything and we've got to dump all this in so if we get a vast majority so um, anyone up for at least starting this uh, getting this ready in the waiting for then we can just add in numbers down the road sure all right i have an electronic version i'll get it to you and uh we'll go from there all right so uh what was that nothing you, no. you, you want to get out all right no <laughs> <laughs> if nothing else so I'll, we approved last week's minutes is that correct or not well, I, I was. I don't okay. mean the. I don't mean the ones from last week, but the, the ones from the first. The oh one yeah, from March first. Oh, we did. No. Yeah, yeah we did. We, we did. We did because I turned those in last week. Okay. Yeah. We're not approving the ones for the eighth yet. Okay. That's yeah. correct. Yeah. All right. Um, yeah, I, we went through that last week, and I turned those in. Um, all right. I'll send a motion to adjourn. So Second. All those in favor, say aye. Bye. Bye. Have a nice evening. Good night, all. Good night. Good night.